Hey guys, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to continue working on our Mega Dungeon. So, um, what I want to do in this episode, I guess we'll call it, is work on the maze area. If you remember when we first started putting this together, let me go here. Um, essentially, I have this area here, area 10, maze type area, fog repeating rooms. So, my idea here was that essentially what we would have is instead of drawing out a large maze, because players will be able to figure that out really easy anyways, and it takes up a lot of space, and it just feels like maybe not the most, the best use of my time. What I decided to do was create a maze that actually uses magic. So essentially this maze consists of, and I will, again, I'll partially left on here, um, maze type area, fog, repeating rooms. The maze is filled with fog that blocks light and infravision beyond 15 feet. Each intersection room is a 10 foot square with four exits. Upon entering the room, the DM should roll randomly to determine which direction the party believes they came from. No longer give directions by north, south, etc. Use left, right, straight, back. Walls are very damp and any chalk marks. Walls, I should do walls and floor. Maybe. Well, let's just do walls. Uh, walls are very damp and any chalk marks will have a 10% cumulative chance of fading per day. This becomes relevant in a second. Uh, the area is patrolled. I'm probably should make these bullet points eventually. There is patrolled by a gray ooze that will, over time, destroy any objects left in the floor. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is smart players, clever players, as we always say, uh, will mark. When they enter into a maze type area, they're going to mark their path, right, so they don't get lost. This helps kind of reduce... There's two things here. First, first of all, it makes it so that they've got to resolve it if they want to keep going through here, if they wait too long. So if they go in here and they explore it and they come back the next day, chances are their their marks are still going to be there. If they go away for a month or a week or whatever, they probably won't be. And part of that is to make more of a challenge for the players, but part of it is also because, remember, our conceit here is that this is a mega dungeon that people know about. People come here to adventure, and they've had trouble getting treasure from it because it's very difficult, trap-laden, trap and you're going to find other adventuring parties and stuff, so why wouldn't there be any markings? Although, as a DM, you could always add some markings from other players. But anyway, and other parties, I should say, not players. Okay, anyways. Um, each turn spent inside the maze, uh, there is a 1 in 12 chance of encountering the ooze. So that's my... Remember, we have our own random encounter thing going on in the in general, but this will be just for the ooze. Um, when entering each section, the DM should see uh, which hallway they arrive from. Unless they, uh, they mark the way, it will change every time. Make notes. Okay, I don't think we need to put that. I think we got the consensus was we don't want to put DM notes in here. Uh, when they take a hallway out of the space, the exit always, is always the same. Thus repeating the path if they if they mark it. This space does not need to be more than nine intersections. That was my own personal notes. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. And some of this might seem a little confusing, but we're going to draw this out, and I think it'll make more sense. Note that if they backtrack, they must re-roll unless the, the area is marked. So if you go straight and you didn't mark it, then you just turn around and go back you might come into a different space. Or you won't, you won't come into a different, well, yeah, you won't come into a different space, but you'll come, you'll think you came into a different space. And I'll explain it again. I think that'll make more sense. Oh, we see it. Uh, every move counts as one turn and random events can occur here. So if you want to use the random event uh, thing here, you can do that as well as the Grey Goose. So let's put this into practice. So I have my iPad here. Uh, I think I'm going to go like this. Yeah, it's black, right? Okay, good. That worked out. Okay, so I already, that's funny. I already drew this out so that, um, I don't know what that is. is that so to be, you get a basic idea. Oh, actually, you can't really see that, but I'm using the green screen. Hold on one second. There we go. All right. Let's just close this up. Oh, no, I'll put myself on the right layer. Okay, so. <clears throat> I mean, so you didn't sit there for 10 minutes while I was just drawing squares. So I just kind of drew this out already. Okay, this is area 11 uh, and entered through area 10. So I should say, rather, this is area 10 and you go through it to get to area 11. So what we've got here, I know I'm looking sideways, is where the 10 is over here on this side. This is where they're going to enter. You know, this will just be a, a corridor, which they'll come into. Then from here, they can make whatever choices they want. Now, once they enter, once they leave one of these first three areas over here, that's when we start doing the uh, kind of the calculation. So let me just clear that. 
So let's say they enter into this middle one, right? And they walk in, that's fine. And then you say to them, okay, you know, you see fog, it's foggy in all directions. Uh, where do you want to go left, right, straight, or back? Now, in this case, if they go back, it's a, it's a set place, right? So they're going to go back. If, if they say straight, for instance, but they don't say they're going to mark their trail, what we're going to do is they're going to go into this section, right? But I'm going to roll a d4, and I'm going to determine, let's say, you can arbitrarily pick it. Let's say the top is number one. Let's say we roll a two. If we roll a two, they actually think they came from this direction. So now when they come into this space, um, if they go, if we go, which direction would you like to go? And they go, uh, we'll go straight again. Well, now they're going to go into this space again, right? But they, which direction did they come from? We'll roll randomly. Let's say we roll a two again. Well, a two would be the right way. Well, yeah, that's fine. Let's say we roll a two again. So it's the right way. They come in through the way that they thought they came from. But now they're back in this first room. And again, if they haven't marked it, and they say we go straight again, they're going to find themselves back out in this hallway. And they might not know that. And then they'll be confused, right? That's the whole point of a maze. Now, if they, if they were to... By the way, guys, just so if you're if you're getting ready to, 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 to comment or whatever, um, I did like five or six of these. And in most cases, after between five and ten <laughs> turns, uh, they got out of the maze. So, and that's without even marking it. So it works out pretty well. Let's say they, they, they're going to mark the maze. So they come in. They're starting here again. And they're going to go straight. And they decide to mark it. And I do the same thing. I roll that. What I would do as a DM is I would make a mark like this. And now that path, as long as it's marked, is permanent. So if they just if they just say, oh, we're just going to go back, right, they will actually end up back in the same spot. And if they marked it and they do the same thing and say they're going to go straight again, well, they'll definitely go straight and they'll end up back in the same room, which is marked, and they'll realize that that's the case. And then if they say, oh, no, we'll turn around and go back again, then that one will be marked. So they'll start to figure it out. Now, of course, if they go off the top, they come back in the bottom you know, classic video game style. And ultimately where they want to end up is over here. Uh, I put a couple of rooms in here just to keep things simple. And that could be places they could rest. You could put things in there randomly, whatever, you know, just, they're just there. If I didn't put those, then you wouldn't be able to, cause you can't go this way randomly and call it here. Cause there's a wall there, right? That's why I did that. And I, I wanted the maze to have some kind of an end. So I think this works out pretty well. It's nice and simple. Um, and all you got to do is what I would do is if I was running this is I would print this out, um, probably on a piece of paper. And then I would just use a pencil to mark what paths work because it may be that they go, you know, okay, we're going to go straight and they end up, you know, thinking they came in through this way. And then they go, we're going to go right. And they, they, they would normally, which would put them out here, but they think they came in from this way. So you'd go like this, you know, you know, and then they decide to go right again and they end up in this one, but they thought they came in this way. So you want to mark that because they can always backtrack. It is going to be a little bit of work on your part. The mapper in the party is going to have a heck of a time. And that's kind of part of the fun of this, right? Okay, so that's the way the maze is going to work. I think it's pretty simple. I don't think that this needs to be written up any more than that. If you guys have any questions about this or any changes, excuse me, as with the other stuff, you know, go for it. I definitely want to hear from you guys. I love that this is becoming more collaborative. And actually, this first chunk of the first section is almost done. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I will have um, this out. Oh, speaking of the, the speaking of the next couple of weeks, <laughs> transition. Um, so I kind of looked at the way YouTube works and the analytics and blah, blah. And it, it looks like that because so many of the viewers that are probably watching this um, don't watch the actual place. That's a different audience in a sense. I'm going to move the actual place to another channel. Um, you could just ignore them, obviously, which is probably what a lot of people are doing. But the way that the analytics work, if you come to this channel once a week to watch these, these videos, but you don't watch any of the other ones, then it actually hurts the, the rankings and stuff. So I'm going to move those to another channel. Uh, if you do watch those, I'll put a link in the description here so you can uh, follow me on that channel. Hopefully we can, if you even watch them occasionally, I, I please jump over there and subscribe to that channel because you need 100 subscribers to get... Um, an actual URL, which would make it a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, if you watch the actual plays or have any interest in them, uh, go ahead and look in the description below and um, just follow me there. It's called Bandits Keep Actual Play. You might be able to find it that way as well. But uh, commercial being over now, let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the build. Okay, so again, this is our this is our maze. So let's look back at our regular dungeon. I think I'm going to leave this like this. I kind of like this over black overlay. 
I thought it was cool that you could, that I was kind of drawing on my own face uh, the way I was doing it before, but I think this black overlay is actually really nice. Um, all right. Okay, so I, I, I worked on this a little bit just so I, I, I straightened out a couple of things. Based on the last video, you can see me in the corner, right? Okay, so based on the last video, I took the, um, oh, let me make another overlay here. So we, just so I can write on it without, without my circle on it and stuff so you guys can see without screwing up the map. So just guys, so you guys can see some of the changes. So I went in and I changed the, I had a 2C here originally. I changed that. These are all going to be 2B with the mirrors. I'll probably put some in other places as well. I also made this hallway right here. I extended it a bit so I could add area 10, which we were just talking about, right? So that's area 10. When you get through area 10 to go to 11, I actually drew, I mean, it's not going to be a long hallway. It's just going to be right there. I drew an area down here. I decided just to, <laughs> I had found um, a little note and I had an idea, uh, which I changed slightly. We'll talk about that in one second, but I just want to show all the stuff first. The other thing that I did was I also extended this way to area 12. And area 12 is going to be our spider maze. And we'll work on that in another video. That's going to be a, that area and the humanoid area is going to be interesting. I think the human, let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking. But my idea here is that the heavily infested spider area is going to be a regular standard kind of, uh, you know, brick and mortar dungeon type thing with lots of kind of normal treasures, if you will, that are just so far buried by the spiders that nobody's touched. So it's going to be a little bit more classic in the sense with the squared rooms and the, uh, you know, secret doors and traps in the floor and, but there'll be lots of spiders and stuff like that. Um, the over here, which is going to end up going to the humanoid area, I think that area is going to be more caves and caverns. And basically the entrance to this is going to be a tunnel that comes up into like a cavernous area. So that's going to be more of like a cave because, I, you know, that's, that's where the humanoids live. But anyways, going away from that for a second, let's look at over here at area 11. Can I do that? Yeah, I can. That's what works. All right. So my original thought here, what happens if I do that? Um, okay, we'll leave that there. Oh, yeah, it's on my face. That's fine. It can be on my face. Um, so what I was originally thinking here was uh, what we would do is have this come into this area because I had found... Let me go over here, right? Um, I'll turn this off for a second so you guys can see. So I had found this, uh, this I think it was on Donjon, uh, for something else, and it said stacks of ruin, uh, moldering books on iron spikes. And I thought, oh, that's a cool location, some kind of funky library, right? Um, and then, so I said, okay, well, that's what I'll put there because I, I thought that would be a good idea. But then I thought... Um, It'd be, I don't want to just have it open up into a library. I thought I would make it so that, because uh, it's moldering, maybe the library would be a, um, like there was a wizard or something, right, that's that's buried here, and or their family, or however we want to do it. And essentially, I was going to have a series of, of uh, basically, tombs, and then at the end of it was the library. But then, <laughs> then, I was watching uh, this show on Amazon called Bosch. Bosch, I think it's called. Just finished it. First season. Eh, sorry. But anyways, there's a whole tie-in with skulls. So I thought, oh, you know what might be interesting? So I'm using to see my little note here. I wrote skulls. Um, instead of having them be books on spikes, I thought it'd be cool to put skulls on spikes. So what I'm thinking is, at the end of each of these hallways, right? So change back to our red. So if we put, instead of a door here, which is where I put, if we put a skull... Okay, make sure I'm on the right layer here. There we go. If, if, if at the end of this, if, we, if instead of putting a door, we put a skull, right, on a, on a spike, okay? And each one of these skulls on this iron spike will be essentially a book. Going from uh, the idea of Fahrenheit 451, where, uh, spoilers for stuff that's been around for a long time, sorry, Essentially, in Fahrenheit 451, the original, but anyways, people memorize books and become books uh, by learning it because, of course, books are illegal and they're burning them. So I thought, oh, it'd be cool if these people were all people who memorized something important, 
right? I memorized a book and their skulls maintain that knowledge. And then what we'll do is each skull will, it'll be, will be, that's what I wrote, languages there. Each skull might speak a different language. So not only are you going to have to uh, figure, we'll figure this out, of course, but also you get the skull. And then if you speak that language, you'll be able to interpret the book. If not, then you'll need to either find somebody that can do it or, you know, hopefully between the group of in the party, you'll have enough people that speak different languages that it'll work for you. So that's my idea here. So I'm just going to quickly draw this out. So what I'm going to do is let's switch this back to black so it's easier for you guys to see it. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to actually not leave the little door symbols that I made because why not? I'm far from a cartographer. So I'm probably not going to be able to draw little tiny skulls here. But what I will do is I'll just take this and I'll just put a little X underneath each one. No, it doesn't look like a skull, does it? Okay. So instead of being lazy, I will actually come through here and let's redo this part. I still like the idea of the hallways because remember, we talked about this before. The idea of hallways is long hallways works because, first of all, it takes time to move but also because your hallways are going to be long enough that if you notice, I made them 60 feet long. That means that they are going to be right at the edge of uh, infravision if you have uh, demi-humans and beyond the reach of like your standard lanterns in most cases. So when they open each one of these hallways, by the way, these are, are over here in the, the center. I'm not gonna have doors. They're basically gonna be looking down these long hallways that are essentially, um, mysterious right and then when they start walking down what they're going to do is at the end they're going to find that there are skulls i'm just going to put circles for the skulls okay so each at the end of each one of these there's a skull on a like an iron spike like a, i probably won't just do an iron spike well it'll be like a like a, a long iron spike it won't just be a little like Put an iron spike in the door. Um, and each of these uh, skulls will have different information. Now, before I do that, let me get to my notes. When I start doing this stuff, I think it's always important. Sometimes I will forget as I'm creating because I have, you know, lots of ideas. I will forget to, to make my notes properly as I do it. So let me actually do that. I'll take that away too so it's not. There we go. All right. So now we know this, right? Okay, area 11. Actually, I want to leave the map up so I can look at it. Okay. So I need to describe it. Beyond a maze is a hallway with several archways both on the north and south walls. You could say left to right if you want to keep that same vibe of the, uh, um, you know, of the maze. Um, okay, so down through each archway is a long hall ending in a, we'll say, five foot iron spike mortared I don't know if mortared is the right word uh, driven into the stone with a an ancient skull atop yeah okay each archway, okay, so each hallway. So this is how we're gonna, because again, you wanna give hints and stuff, right? So each hallway is covered in faded and 
tripped mosaics. I like my mosaics showing the history and culture of various humanoid races. The skull that sits at the end of the hallway is of the race described, not described, hmm. shown in the mosaic. Okay, that'll be the hint, right? So they're gonna see elves frolicking and it's gonna be an elven skull, right? Each skull is a repository of knowledge. Each skull's covered with a repository of knowledge um, that can be accessed by someone speaking the appropriate language, racial language, I'll say. All right, now, I like all this, right? The question becomes now what you want them to be. Now, again, this is, let's get some stuff in the comments, what you guys think will be down here. My first thought is, is that at least, excuse me, at least some of these will be, um, these could be history related. Some tell stories of ancient treasures, right? So that's basically effectively a, a, a treasure map and some speak of magical spells. So basically they can use tolerant spells. Uh, most of the time in my, it, I mean, if you're running straight BX, then this isn't really an issue or it's not even really useful um, to most people. But uh, in a lot of games, you know, you can have spell books where people can have multiple spells. So having an ability, to do, this is a place where you can get spells from. That being said, and again, put some comments down there, but I, there is this. So Donjon, once again, comes to the rescue. You know, I like my Donjon. And we've got, in the fantasy random generator, we have uh, ancient tomes. So now, a lot of these describe what they look like and how they can be opened and stuff. So you could use some of this. Um... You know, they're said to be haunted. These these actually, hmm, the more I look at these, these don't seem to be that useful for what we're going to do. So possibly this isn't going to be worthwhile. Uh, you could have them spot forth prophecies, maybe, if you want to do some random stuff. Or, you know, just make up what you think the library would have. I, and again, maybe we'll, we'll, there's only, looks like there's 10 here. So if we can get 10 good, uh, 10 good comments below, we'll, uh, we'll get, um, We'll get these done. I think some, though, will definitely be spells. So, and I think they'll be high-level spells. You know, and again, I know it's the first level of a dungeon, but at the same time, they've got to get through the maze to get here. They have to figure out what it is and, you know, whatever. So I'm not I'm not opposed to making these, uh, you know, relatively high-level spells to go forward. But, of course, they could also be simple spells. And then again, I don't mean spells as in scrolls, but in spells as learning for the book. But I think a lot of times what this might be useful for is that, like, you could say, like, one of the skulls is, in fact, let's make one up right now. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling ambitious. So, one skull is that of a great sage who has, who studied all who studied, hmm, I'm thinking uh, dragons, right? Well, dragons is 
it's a first level adventure. They're probably not going to give me a dragon. So how about um, studied the oh the arts of teleportation and portal building the skull can be useful in determining the proper function of the mirror portal from area two. Okay. Including ways to use it to move between areas outside of the dungeon, possibly to some distant locations untouched by greedy explorers. Wow, that's really long. Oh, why is this push over like that? I'm going to check something here. That's not what I want. Hmm. Oh, I didn't wrap properly. Okay. All right, so essentially now, you know, so there's one, right? I mean, you know, this this is, we'll, we'll have to number them one. And we can make them NPCs. You can give them personalities. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. What do you guys think we should do here? They, this one I'm going to throw out to the group because I feel like uh, that could be really fun. All right, so that's that, right? Now let's actually step out um, beyond... Beyond this area, let's. That's that's like the um, the beginnings of it, right? But this can't be all that's here. I mean, it could be, I suppose. You could put dozens of these things and just have a huge area full of of these skulls, and that could be what it is. Maybe it's just a library. But I feel like as I started to draw it, I felt like there should be some kind of like room at the end that um, you know. Maybe I'm changing my mind. Yeah, you know what. Instead of doing that, I think I am just going to do this. Let's see. What we're going to do here, guys, is this is literally all that's going to be at the end of this. And what I want is to... We'll see how many we can of these we can come up with. And we'll just make the hallway as long as we, as long as we need to, to fill them all. If there's a hundred of them, we'll come up with a hundred. <laughs> Although I don't know if there's a hundred... Uh, so give me a race, right, uh, for the skull to be, and also the knowledge that the skull might have, and we'll uh, and we'll make that that. You know, we'll just have this extend on. I like that. Okay, good. That was pretty simple. Okay, so looking looking at this now, we're going to do a little bit more. What time is it? Okay, we're at like half an hour in. So actually, this is pretty complete, I think. So. I think we'll leave it here and I'll just, I'm going to go down that other hallway or work on the spider thing next time. That way we can keep these a little bit shorter. Um, but let's just review what we have here before we go. Close that up. That's working pretty well, actually. Nope. There we go. There it is. Okay. I'll get hang of that eventually. All right. So what we've done in this particular um, setup is we have created... Again, we've worked on this area over here. Um, right, we've added this whole section. We've added this section. I 
that's what I did there. Okay, we've added. Man, it does not want to let me do that. Oh, I see what's going on here. There we go. Okay, so anyways, let's make it blue so we can see the difference. So we added this section here, which is essentially that maze, which is probably a session. I mean, hopefully, unless you, the, I mean, your players are slick, they're going to be able to, in a session, get in here, figure out the maze, get, you know, and maybe have a couple of encounters and come out of it, which leads down to here. And this right here is going to be, again, their reward. That's their repository of goodness. Um, I do think that, actually, see, as we're wrapping up and my brain is working, I think we're being a little bit too... Remember, this place is supposed to be full of traps and be dangerous, right? So perhaps we're being a little bit too... Uh, a little too generous here, right? So the, if they come into this area, there's got to be a reason or, or some kind of a situation that could occur beyond just getting lost in the maze. I mean, getting lost in the maze, they might run into the Grey Ooze, which is very deadly for a low-level uh, party. Also, they're spending more time in here. The longer they're in, the more light source, blah, blah, all that stuff works out. But each of these archways... Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's go in here. I kind of wanted to crowdsource this, but I feel like what I'm going to want to do here a little bit, though, is let's... Let's take a look at this for a second. I'm going to leave this guy here. I'm going to call this 11A. Okay. But perhaps we need to have some kind of curse or something um, on the... Okay. All right. I have an idea here. So when entering the hallway comma if the race of the skull is the same as the PC they must save versus spells or become trapped In the mosaic. Yeah, try to mosaic. I know, it's kind of a save or die thing, but in a sense, um, this is basically how the, uh, the skulls accumulate knowledge. You know, maybe they suck people in. So now you, you look down the hallway, you're an elf, and you're just like, oh man, that's an elvy, elvish hallway. I'm going to go down there. Um, and if you do, you're going to need to make a uh, safe. Save versus spell, or you get sucked inside. Like uh, Essentially, we'll, we'll treat this treat as magic jar spell. You know, where they're basically uh, trapped inside. Um, and ancient. Mm. Person of that. Race will take over their body, and they should be treated as an NPC unless the party, until the party can convince the new occupant of their friend's body to release them. This typically requires some sort of quest. Roll a random treasure map and the treasure, I guess. At the end is the thing the possessing spirit wants. All 
All right, so this is um, passing spirit. What was that saying? All right, so this is again quite a powerful area um, because they can get all kinds of knowledge. However, um, in order to do this, they either have to have a very good save versus spell, be lucky, um, or they're going to be forced to do some kind of a quest. So if they want the knowledge of the elves, right, they're going to need to go in here to get this information, and it might mean that one of the PCs kind of gets taken out for a bit as a uh, as they are possessed by this uh, by this creature. I mean, you can do this any number of ways. Uh, looking at it as, a, as strictly a trap, what I would say, um, you don't want to just be like, okay, well, you're now Fernard, blah, blah, the elf from a thousand years ago. You can just run them. Because then it doesn't, then the piece, the player's just going to be like, oh, fine, okay, whatever. I mean, in most cases, right? So you do want to take away, uh, it just sounds bad, but you want to essentially kill their character at that point because if you don't do that, then this isn't going to be really a trap at all. So it needs to be that, okay, that person's an NPC. You're running Bob's character now until they can do this quest and Bob's just going to have to roll a new character. You know, temporarily anyways. What I likely would do though is I would, uh, I mean, personally, I probably would, if, if Bob then rolls a new character, um, I would very likely... Whatever experience points that new character accumulates, I would just give them back to the old character. Or I should say, the NPC should be gaining experience points just like the other character should, so that it's not like they missed out on a bunch of adventures. They'll still get the experience points. Okay, let me make sure this all makes sense. Uh, beyond the maze of the hallway. Okay, so this is really powerful, right? So now, let's come up with... Um, looks like I drew 12 here. 12 is always good, right? One for each month. Uh, let's come up with 12 uh, race, humanoid-type races, um, Actually, I feel like we should probably keep only the races that PCs can be in order to make this powerful. You know, maybe um, we'll do like one or two that are like orcs or uh, a lizard man or something. But I think for the most part, they should be the races that people could. Well, at least most of them should be human. Otherwise, again, it's not going to be an issue because uh, they can just walk in there and be like, oh, this is a, you know, minotaur, whatever. And if we speak minotaur, we can just get the information. So, yeah, I definitely think that uh, we want to make these mostly human some elf, halfling, dwarf for sure, and then maybe we'll have like one or two odd races. So let me know what you guys think. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, um, and we will continue with this uh, in the next video. I'll see you next time.